uh, Brady, uh, where he's uh, recently uh, built uh, a project or uh, created a uh, an application called Time Seed GPT. Um, I'll let him kind of dis define or, or sort of show and, and, and showcase what it is, um, but it, it looks really interesting uh, from just looking at the screenshot and so on, um, where it gets uh, data from various sources and then use semantic kernel to summarize all that and present it to you in this um, experience, uh, which is really interesting given that, you know, a lot of it usually um, chat experience and this is uh, something different. So I'll let you uh, share your screen if you want, awesome. uh, Brady. Thank you, Vic. Uh, yeah, so Timesheet APT is a little project I've been working on when I have spare time. And basically the problem it's solving is when I do my timesheets, I have to go through all the emails I've sent for a day, all the all the appointments I had in my calendar, and then I need to sort of summarize that into a nice timesheet, into nice notes for the timesheet app. And it takes a while. So I, I built this timesheet GPT. So you give it a date and I'm going to do last Monday because that's the day that I found that there's no, um, there's no secret emails. There's nothing, there's nothing to hide on Monday. And you can see the additional prompts field here. Now this, I haven't found much many use cases for this, but it's kind of just lets you, if you want to ignore something, you can say ignore emails about a certain topic and additional notes. If you've taken notes for your day somewhere, you can just dump them in there. Anyway, so we can see it's got, it's gone to a gra Microsoft graph and it's grabbed all the emails I sent on Monday and every meeting that I had. And you can see some of them are nine hours. Now that means it's a, it's a booking. So it's like, yeah, that was my focus for the day. Sometimes that would be a client booking. And we can see it figured that out and it's recognized I did the tech news, I took two hours, and then it's got all my other meetings there and emails. You can see it's picked different emojis for them to sort of indicate what's an email, what's a meeting. Pretty cool. Anyway, this is pretty nice. I can just hit copy, then I can go paste that into my timesheet app. And yeah, so that's that's the basic functionality of it. It's very basic and it was super easy to build. So I might jump over to the code. Yeah, I really so like it's that. Just, um, you mentioned there's no use case, but I can see this. You know, a few people are mentioning that it's uh, pretty good, especially if you're in sort of consulting and so on. So it's great to to be able to to do that. Now, now you got to write one for like performance reviews, like at the end of every year, just like go through and like find <laughs> all the good stuff you did. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. All this data is available. We just need to pull it out and do the right thing with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brady. Um, so so the, the one thing about the emails there, like it, it just grabs yeah. the subjects, right? It's not just the subject. The whole email. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. And the yeah. meetings, like, does that look at your calendar? So yeah, it's looking at the calendar and it's getting mm -hmm. the meeting subject and the length. I, I realize the length is pretty important to indicate like what it was. Yeah. Anyway, it's a Blazor server app. And I did Blazor Server because I know Blazor Server is very quick to build. Um, I'm not sure if it's the right tech for this, but it's working pretty well so far. Anyway, it's using Mud Blazor, so this is the component. Okay, I wondered about the the component library you were using. It looked like Mud Blazor. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, nice. we'll skip to the interesting stuff. So generate timesheet. This is what happens when you click that generate button. We use this service here. And we pass it everything. We pass it the date, so today's date, and any notes and any extra prompts. And then I'll F12 on that. And I'm grabbing the graph service client. Now, I saw that video that Vic showed earlier where it was, I saw the thumbnail, something about graph and semantic kernel. So maybe there's a better way to do this, but I'm just using the graph API how, it, how you would normally use it. And then I've got a I've got a little abstraction of that to get some emails and the meetings. And then I take all that and then 
pass it to my AI service, which is just Semantic Kernel. And I set up all the set up the builder. I use OpenAI, set up the kernel, and then I generate it. And I'm passing it in a prompt and the prompt configs. And add all the variables, and then it just executes that and gives me a nice result. So this was my first semantic kernel thing. I've there's probably things to improve, so I'd love to hear it if there is. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is how I structured my prompts. Right now it's sort of horizontal slices. I've got the prompt templates, and that's in one class. And I've got two prompts in there, one's not being used. But I was sort of trying to figure out the best way to do this and how how it would scale. And I, I'm not in love with this option, but this is what I'm doing right now. So there's the prompt templates, and that's got the prompt in it with a... So I'm still doing the like the semantic kernel prompt language, but I'm just, I'm just hitting that in a function because it's ugly. And then I've made constants for all the variables. So there's no magic strings being used. And then the prompt configs, that's another file, another class. And I've got two configs in there. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, that's that's the that's the like the initial scope of what I wanted to build. And then on the weekend, I was playing around with some cool stuff. If I've got time, Vic, I'd love to show that. Yeah, sure. I just a quick question on this. Um, yeah. Just around the kind of authentication, because uh, I can see that you're um, grabbing or fetching data from Microsoft Graph. Um, yeah. So Where is that was the just, question? just the standard uh, bearer token that you? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So use for that. Yeah. Obviously, um, you don't have to show that here, but <laughs> no, uh, yeah, your bearer token. Yeah. You sign in on the client and it just passes. Well, it's a Blazor server app, so your client is your server. So yeah. I don't, I'm not passing any tokens around. That's okay. Yeah, that was the easiest way I could think of doing it. I couldn't figure out. I would love it if the API was separate. Mm -hmm. So I could build, like, integrate this, like the Timesheet GPT service into timesheeting apps. Mm -hmm. So I should make that change. I've got the project here. It's just empty right now. <laughs> yeah. So is this Blazor Blazor seven or Blazor eight? Eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah. So waiting for waiting for the the final release of that. Um. Hey, th this is awesome. Just a couple of questions. Have you thought of using, or did you consider using, um, because you've got an inline um skill function there, right? Yeah. Have you yeah. considered moving that out into an imports? Um, then you can use the Visual Studio extension for semantic kernel and sort of evaluate the prompt, you know, the evaluate the functions outside. Is that something sort of on the roadmap? You create a skills like I've got to stop using the term skills, a functions, functions. library, yeah. plugins library. Yeah. Re Rebranding again. <laughs> I yeah, I haven't I haven't investigated it much moving that but i have i was playing around that was the next thing i was going to show so i might jump into that i'm going to go to slash chat and this is a, another page i built and it's very bare bones so i'm going to copy a prompt i prepared earlier and it says show me you know subjects for the 16th of october and that'll have a think and so what's that's what that is doing is it's using this function here no up it's using this one and this was what i was playing around with on the weekend it's i don't know if i've done it right but it's pretty cool so i've got a plugins class and there's just a few very simple plugins get email body from id and then a few other ones to get various data and you can see if we, oh, it's brought me here. Cool. I'll just jump back. You can see that these functions aren't being used anywhere in the code. So they're only being used by 
the the planner when it decides to use them. So I'll jump back and I can see that's done. So I'm going to continue that and get rid of that. And yeah, so it's gone and got me all the same data, but I could do it in a natural language way. Nice. So that's creating a nice. plan using the function, yep. the graph function uh, that you've created, which is a, which is a um, native function, right? It's not a semantic function, it's a native function. Is that, that's correct? That your yep. graph plugin and then going and calling. Cool, sweet. Now it works. Yeah. You've found it, have you tried it with GPT-3.5 and GPT-4? It looks like you're using, you've tried both, yeah. cheap mode and yeah. cheap mode. <laughs> so I've got cheap mode and expensive mode. <laughs> and I found expensive mode is miles better. Yeah, so. you because obviously the newer version of SK uses um, the functions uh, attributes of the the newer GPT models. Are you using that version? Have you found a difference between or a reliability? Did you uh, you, you talked about doing this this weekend? So I'm assuming. Mm. Um, you're using, you probably didn't use the older one where it didn't no. use, didn't use that extent, didn't use that attributes function, the functions attribute of the, the API call. Yeah. Yeah. I never tried the old one, but I have found this pretty reliable. It always figures out, like it always makes a good plan, figures out what it needs to do using the functions to achieve the goal. Yep. Uh, haven't had any issues with it getting confused. I, there, this one was annoyed me for a bit i had to create it it doesn't know what day it is i had to tell yep. it i had to make this to explain what day it is so it could i think go find that just out of interest i think in the semantic kernel there's a it, it comes with a, a number of built-in mm, there could be functions yeah. i think I probably, it's probably a better way of doing it maybe i can import well, it's, the same, it's done the same way I think, it, they, I think they can't i can't remember off the top of my head but in the sk uh, Vic, have you got the GitHub repo for SK there? They've got a, a a set of sort of helpful native functions that you can sort of import in just to help you. Things like get yeah. date, you know, what's today's date? Yeah, out of out of the box plugins or something they call it. I don't know. It's um it's available in uh, SK. Yeah, in the SK um, uh, repo, um, and you can import them. Yeah, effectively you can just import them and and use that um, uh, for your application. I think I think it's when it says out of the box, you have to have to actually import it. It's not like right. You know, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> you actually uh, run the the kernel and then it has everything in there, but you just have to import that. Yeah. And do you, using stepwise, did you try with sequential? Did you have any different? Uh, briefly, uh, I did, and, and I found it didn't perform. Very well. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah. So, so stepwise yeah. works works well. The yeah, other thing in there is cool. is the API key. Um, you're passing an API key. There's those that completion service does support um, token auth as well. So you can actually go and create a service principle on your um, on your Azure OpenAI service if you're using it. Uh, this is using OpenAI, isn't it? Yes. In which okay. case you can't, but you can with Azure OpenAI. You can add a, a yep. um, an auth token. Yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of lots of other improvements I can make as well. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. That's I recorded I your improvements here from awesome. uh, DSR for you, Brady. So anyway, <laughs> I'll make <the> next <laughs> full backlog to work on it after this. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an open source repo. If you guys have any other ideas, go make an issue. Um, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. So cool. I send the, cool. Um, yeah, based in the uh, the repo link as well. Oh yeah, I'll do that. And showing oh, off already. Blazor eight. I mean, come on, this is this is <laughs> this is all the Leading great edge. all the cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, have you deployed uh, it to Azure yet, Brady? I think we worked on that as well, didn't we? Yeah. So it is live. There's a link here in the repo. All this stuff I've did on the weekend is still in a PR. Luke had a few complaints about it, but I'll get through them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's live. So you can go use it. Try it out. It'll just sign you in and, um, Microsoft account. Yeah. Yeah. So any Microsoft account will work. Yeah. Oh, I might have to check that. I'm pretty sure we fixed the app registration, so it does let anyone in. But mm. I haven't tried it with a personal account. Yeah. 
All right, so that's what I said. It'll, it'll work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I was going to ask, um, what about um, like getting at like stuff like um, like Copilot recaps and stuff, like to get information about meetings. Yeah, you could you could definitely get it to look at transcripts and stuff for meetings. You know, would that would that any, add any would that any, add any value to your um to the, to the functionality or de determining depends, what your uh, depends how yeah. detailed you want your timesheets, I guess. Like how much for me, I found the subject is more than enough most of the time. Yeah. 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 It proved. It probably proved that I was just talking rubbish the whole way through the meeting. <laughs> no one has to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, the biggest takeaway I got from building this is that it's super quick to spin this stuff up, and get it working. Um, so even like some of this stuff, you might say, "Oh, you can. You don't have to write. You don't have to use AI for that. You can. You can um, do this stuff without AI." And that's probably true, but like the speed I could get this working is, it's it's crazy, yeah. So if you're prototyping something, if you're trying to get something working quickly, definitely go, just use AI, even if it's probably not the most optimized use case for it, yeah. And like the, the, the possible extensions, like you like throw like Wolfram or something in the mix and just like get it to do like traveling sounds yeah, that's right. and like, like yeah. routing to see, that was the, that was the worst route you went to. You took to go and visit all those customers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's it for me. Thanks, guys. Thanks, bro. Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Reddy. Um, first demo of APAC and NZ.